Hello and welcome to our Church at Home video for Sunday the 2nd of August. My name is Andrew Gill and I'm the minister of St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church in Black Rock and in Bray. We're continuing our series looking at the life of Abraham from the Bible and today we're going to think about three choices we want to avoid if we're going to live in God's blessings. It's estimated that we make 35,000 choices every day. That's about one every two seconds. So you made a choice to watch this video and right now you're trying to decide whether you're going to keep on watching it or not. And I really hope that you do because I think this is going to be a real help and encouragement to you today. But we make thousands of decisions every day. Now some of them are very small, some of them are big, most of them are automatic, but on some we spend ages and hours thinking about. But they're all important because they all contribute to the life that we live. As John Maxwell says, life is a matter of choice and every choice you make makes you. So we're gonna be looking at this story of Abraham and Lot in Genesis chapter 13. And this chapter opens with Abraham and his nephew Lot returning from Egypt. Now, while Abraham's time in Egypt was marked with spiritual failures, Financially, it was a great success. And both him and Lot are returning with herds of cattle and flocks of sheep, and the land that they're living on can't support both of them. So Abraham says to Lot in verses eight to nine, let's not have any quarreling between you and me or between your herders and mine, for we are close relatives. Is not the whole land before you? Let's part company if you go to the left, I'll go to the right. And if you go to the right, I'll go to the left. So Abraham gives Lot a choice. And Lot chooses to go live near a place called Sodom. Now I'll explain in just a moment about why that was a bad choice. But right now I want us to see about how he made that choice. Because in verses 10 to 11, it says that Lot made his choice based on what was visually appealing, what was self-satisfying, and what was immediately pleasurable. So Lot lifted his eyes and he saw the fertile land and the cities of the valley, and he moved towards what was visually attractive to him. And he chose the best for himself, paying little or no concern for the welfare of his uncle. And we get the sense that he didn't want to have to wait and work for good things in the future, but he wanted to enjoy life now. So he made his decision based on what was visually appealing, what was self-satisfying, and what was immediately pleasurable. But why was moving to Sodom a bad choice? Well, we need to understand that in the bigger picture of what's going on in the Abraham story, the central theme running throughout it all is that of God's promises, and particularly God's promise to give Abraham's descendants the land. And so geographically, Lot is moving out of the promised land and in a sense, turning his back on God's blessings. He rejects God following the desires of his eyes and it leads to ruin. The second thing we see about why it was a bad choice is in verse 13, when we read that the people of Sodom were wicked and were sinning greatly against the Lord. Now it says this not because they were guilty of one particular type of sin, but because they were brazenly indulging in every kind of sin. Sodom was an evil place, and Lot should have stayed far away from it. But he chose based on what was visually appealing, what was self-satisfying, and what was immediately pleasurable. We get a hint of what's gonna to happen to Lot in verse 10, when it says that Sodom would be destroyed as judgment for their sin. And we don't have time in this video to look at all the details in Lot's life and to chart his decline. But by the end, we see that he has lost everything. His possessions are gone, his family is a mess, and he's living fearfully in a cave. Life is a matter of choices, and every choice you make makes you. So what choices are you making in life? Are your daily decisions bringing you closer to God and to his blessings? 
Or are they moving you closer to sin and to destruction? Reading a story like this, you've got to ask yourselves, what kind of things are you looking at and how is it influencing you? How are you choosing to speak to those around you? How are you choosing to spend your time or your money? What do the choices that you made last week show you about what's important to you and about what your priorities are? And do you need to make any changes? The story of Lot is that of warning. But in this passage, we also have Abraham who sets us an example of good choices to make. Because first choice he makes is to seek God. In verse 3, it says that he went from place to place until he came to Bethel, to the place between Bethel and Ai, where his tent had been earlier and where he had first built an altar. There he called on the name of the Lord. Abraham had made some bad decisions down in Egypt, but now he has learned from his mistakes and he is trying to seek God and to restore the relationship that he had with him at the beginning. Then when an argument broke out in the family business, Abraham chooses to have peace over possessions. Having a good relationship with his nephew is more important than holding on to what is his. So generously, he chooses to make an offer to Lot and to share the promised land with him. But of course, as he's already seen, Lot thought the grass was greener elsewhere. Abraham made lots of good choices. He chose to seek God. He chose to make peace. He chose to be generous. And lastly, he chose to trust in God's future promises. Because this chapter ends but with God reaffirming his promises to Abraham. And Abraham, with the eyes of faith, looks out on the land and believes that what God said was going to happen will happen and that one day that land will be filled with his descendants. And so Abraham builds an altar to worship God because of what he said he will do. So what choices are you going to make after watching this video? Jesus, in his desire to make peace, has generously offered to share his inheritance with you. If life is about choices, then the best choice to make is to trust in Jesus and to live in God's blessings. Let's pray. Father God, thank you that through Jesus, you have given me the choice of eternal life. Forgive me for all the selfish choices I have made in the past. Help me to live by faith and not by sight. And give me wisdom in all my decisions. Amen.